G'day, Mike from Aussie Mike's Bees. Welcome to part four of the Long Lang build, where we add the roof, hot wax dip all the wood, and then fit it all together with hardware, hinges, catches, struts. So stick around and see the rest. As you can see, I've already built the roof and I'll take you through the process that I followed. First thing I did was cut the end pieces out, two identical pieces with this angle on to set the pitch of the roof. And I used a jig on the table saw to do that. Next came the front and back rails. Now the only trick there was I had to have the top edge, now I've got this upside down at the moment, but the top edge had to match the pitch of the roof. So I just slid it through the table saw with the blade at the matching angle. So that was pretty easy. And then I used a box joint jig to do the box joints for the corners. But you don't have to use box joints, you could use anything you want. And then just for a bit of extra strength, I made up another piece to go in the middle. This is the same as the end pieces, but a bit shorter because it's fitting on the inside of the rails. And then I've glued and screwed that into place. I just used a couple of pieces of plywood. This is 10 mil ply. And I just ran it through the saw to get the angle again for the pitch. And they join up together. Then I glued and screwed it down to the frame. I used a hole saw to cut this hole in the end, just under the lip there. Now, most of the time that'll stay closed, but it'll be available for air venting. But the primary function of this is after the lid's open and I've done the inspections, there's going to be a few bees inside. So I'll leave this open and they'll be drawn to the light and find their way out. After I've given them a bit of time, I'll close that off. Either I'll stop it with something or I'll make up a little flap that can close. I haven't decided yet. Originally I was going to have a screen bottom board, but as you can see, this one's solid. It's only because I ran out of time and I just could not put in the time to make up a full screen bottom. So I came up with an alternative and I saw it on YouTube somewhere and I can't remember who it was, so sorry about that. The idea is to use jars and cut the top of the lid out and then put mesh, now hardware cloth number eight, basically mesh the same as a screen bottom board. Fit that in there, glue it in, and then in the holes that you cut, you fit that up from underneath and I pin it in, just make it fixed, glued maybe, and then that mesh lid forms a mesh here for the bees to chase small hive beetle into. From the underneath side, you screw on your jar with oil or diatomaceous earth. And that does two things. It isn't screened, as in it's not going to be ventilating, but it does capture the small hive beetle and larvae for that matter. And they die, but it protects the inside from anything coming in from outside. This little slot here is the entrance. So I've put the holes right next to each of the two entrances that I have here. Hopefully they'll be drawn in there and hunted in and fall straight in. But otherwise they can be chased in from around the hive. Now before I can fit the roof to the base permanently, I want to hot wax dip everything. But before I hot wax dip everything, I want to make sure I've done all the cutting and drilling that I need to do. I've got to do a dry fit of the hinges and the struts and everything else first. So when I fit the roof to the base, I'll be using this hardware. I've elected to use stainless steel butt hinges. And instead of recessing it like you would with a normal household door, I'm just going to be surface mounting it like that. But I do have to account for the body of the hinge. Have a look up here. And you can see how that hinge section protrudes from the flat. So I'll have to shave some wood out to accommodate that bulge. But that's pretty simple. 
Now around the front, so the hinge is around the other side, around the front I need to keep the lid shut in case of wind, but also the pressure of the gas struts. So I've elected to use these sort of catches. Now let's see, it comes with hardware to fit the hook, which I'll put up here like so. And then you fit the latch part to the base and it's adjustable. And I'll just have two of those, one each end, and that'll be plenty for this. And it's even got the facility to put a padlock in. I'm not sure you'd need to do that. I've already lined up where the hinges are going. And I had the roof lined up square, marked off where the holes are going. And the next thing I've got to do is just cut out the little groove for the hinge body to fit flush. And to do that, I'm using my little trim router with a quarter inch straight bit. So to fix the hinges, I've got to drill the holes out. Now I'm using six millimeter stainless steel nuts and bolts, as opposed to normal door hinges where you just have a wood screw going in from one side. I just want to make sure I've got full strength. So these are six millimeter, which is pretty close to quarter inch. So you could use it in the US. And these fit neatly into the holes in the hinge like so. Now it doesn't matter that I've got the nut sitting proud like that because it's not going to be closing over like a normal house door. It's just going to go to 90 degrees and that's fine. All I've got to do is drill those in. These are uh, 25 mil which is an inch and that'll be just enough to get to the other side to lock the nut on and then three per and we're rock solid then. To make it a little easier to fit the roof on without having to flip it up and hold the lid open while I put the nut and the bolt through, what I'll do is drill the inside just a little bit smaller than the nut and put that through. Now, as it happens, I've already drilled that. So what I do is put that nut on there and it starts to go into the hole. And then I just tighten it up and that pulls the nut into the hole, wedging it firmly in there. That's called an embedded nut. So now that nut's fixed in there. I'm just doing, like this is just temporary because I've still got to wax the whole thing and I don't want the nuts in there for that time. So I'm just fitting off these. You can see how that pulls the nut into the hole and that embeds the nut in there. Now I can unscrew it. The nut stays put, the bolt comes out, then when it's time to fit off from the outside, it's all done. Right, pop the lid on and we'll screw this up now. Opening up from this side. I like that. Now unlike the hinges, the catches don't bear any real weight. So I don't need to have those bolts with the nuts. I'm just going to use screws and I've decided to use these 32 mil or inch and a quarter. 10 gauge. They fit through the holes nicely. Why I chose that, I don't want any hardware to go through to the shelf on the inside. These parts of the brackets have three mounting holes and the hook that'll mount up to the top here has two. That'll be plenty. With a self-tapper you want to pre-drill so I've done 
two pilot holes for the hook plate here. Otherwise you'll end up splitting the wood, you don't want to be doing that. Now on the roof here, the screws are going to be too long. But I couldn't get anything shorter in the 10 gauge. Now I just want to mark on there where those holes are going to go. Right, perfect. Now I'll just do the other side and we're done with that. Next on the list are the gas struts. Now this comes as a full kit with the brackets and the strut and these handy little instructions that are invaluable. Now you can buy struts naked and they're intended to replace existing ones that have failed. So make sure you get the full kit with the brackets. Now the instructions say to prop the, the door or this, in this case the lid, open to 90 degrees. I've come slightly less than 90 degrees they're pretty close to it, maybe maybe 85. I don't think it's critical. Just whatever you want it open to. I'd like it open this wide so it's easy to work on the bees in the middle. First we measure off from the hinge, which is along the bottom here. So I'm just going to go 70 mil from the low edge of the lid. I'll just mark on the wood 70 mil. With that sitting there, I'm just going to screw that in there. I'll just mark a couple of spots. Then we pop on the strut. And that just clips in like so. Then we line up the other end. And we don't have to push that home. We can leave it off at the moment just while I do those pilot holes for that too. Pop that on. All right, so we've finally got to the time when we can hot wax dip the woodwork. And it's taken a while to get here. Uh, part of the reason is that I had to modify things for my vat. Now I purpose built vat just to do long lengths to be long enough. Uh, so I've got this one over here. This is my original single box vat that I built uh, a while ago, two, two or three years ago, I've forgotten. And then I built this one to do the long lengths. And I've done one long lang in there before for a mate, but his was a lot lighter and smaller than what I've come up with. I've put in this winch there you go, up here. And now I can lift it in without using my back to do it and with the risk of splashing wax. Another little modification is that I made these little frames to put the burners on to bring them up to height. Because before I was just using cinder blocks and that was a real pain because it didn't balance very well. I'm gonna light her up and get the wax melting. Turn the old gas on and get lighting. You know this one, I've got to open those valves up. Takes a little while for the gas to come through these burners. All the rings are going and now I just push them under. Now my little, my little wax bat only needed one of these burners, but I've got more than twice the amount of wax in this as I do in the small one. Now it's just a case of weight, because it'll take hours to, fill, uh, to melt all of that. So is this dangerous? You bet it is. This is boiling, hot, highly flammable wax. The flash point is 204 degrees Celsius. I'm going to be bringing it up to about 150, so I'm well below flash point, but it's still liquid highly flammable so yeah you've got to take precautions with this i cover up my skin wear a, a, sh a face shield i um, have a fire extinguisher down there so you take precautions i've got a steel lid to throw on top in case something goes wrong 
and it can do. It's never happened to me so far. I've had some minor splashes up on my bare arms. I learned from that, so you don't wear uh, t-shirts when you're doing this sort of thing because the wax gets in and it burns the skin a bit, but it sticks to the hair. And I thought, now I know what those women go through. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, yeah, so it is dangerous. Take precautions. Look, the people that cook your fish and chips when you go down to the takeaway shop, um, they're dealing with this sort of thing. So you can work with it safely. You just take the precautions. I had to get some more wax because I didn't have enough in the vat for the depth of the of the long lane because a normal box it's not as deep so I'd only ever have enough wax to cover the wood that I was working with well I don't have enough for that now I'll have to add some more and this is what I've got I use a 50-50 mix of micro crystalline wax and the other ones are paraffin wax they're both petroleum products get on your high horse about that if you want but really it's not going to affect the bees or the food these bricks are five kilos each and I'll probably put all of those in to the vat to bring it up to speed I'll always use it at some stage anyway I cook normal beehives in that big one as well it'll always get used some people have asked can you use beeswax for that and yes you can and a lot of beekeepers do when they've got an abundance of beeswax but it's the same thing if you use just beeswax by itself it'll be greasy on the outside it won't do the the job you're looking for so you've got to mix it with rosin and rosin has the same effect on beeswax as the microcrystalline has on paraffin and it makes the wax suck into the wood with a dry finish so when you see the finished product of wood at the end of the process it feels dry but water beads up on it I mean I'd love to use beeswax but I don't produce enough and paraffin is a hell of a lot cheaper than buying beeswax. While I'm waiting for the wax to uh, heat up, I just wanted to talk about this lid business for catching the small hive beetle. And I originally said I'd, I'd drill out the top of a jar and then put in one eighth inch mesh, like number eight hardware cloth. And over here, that's a, about a three, three and a half mil hole size. And I've got that for when I've made up the uh, screen bottom boards on my standard langs. But then I was thinking, why go to all that trouble? Now, if you know someone with a 3D printer, you could design up something like this. So I put these holes in the bottom and then they just slip in there nicely. Fits in snug. Beetles come in through the entrance, go in the holes, fall in if they're corralled up by the bees and the jar goes on from underneath. So no air leaks, change the oil over, get rid of the dead beetles and all of that. Then I had another thought. Well, since I could design it with all these holes in there, and if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you could get the standard lid and go in with a 1 8 drill and just drill a whole bunch of holes. Way. So that's an easy way of doing it. But, you know, I have got access to a 3D printer. Then I've had yet another thought. I'll do a series of slots instead of all these holes. And I reckon that might work better. So just to try it, I'll do one of each and see how it goes. Okay, it's about four hours to get this up to temperature. So we're finally ready to do it. A little nippy, but this will keep me warm. I've checked the temperature. It's about 140 degrees Celsius now, high enough. And that's on the surface, because I use this uh, infrared uh, thermometer. So I just pop the lid, aim it in the guts of it. 100 and just under 140 so that'll do me and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm covering up so I've no bare arms welders gloves jeans safety boots all my skins covered and a, and a shield just for any splash because it could happen so I'm going to take the lid off then I'll use the winch to lift up the box and lower it in here we go time to get the lid off I'm going to use my winch.
All right, we're coming up for 10 minutes now, that's plenty. So I'm gonna to start to lift it out. Now all that wax in the middle has to drain out the beetle trap holes. So I don't wanna do this too fast. I wanna give it time to drain. Pay a bit of attention to the wetness if you can see it. So you can see how wet it is at the moment and then in a few minutes that'll all start drying up as a hot wood sucks in the excess wax. Now the lid's a lot lighter and not as awkward. So I'm going to feed that in by hand. I haven't rigged up a winch arrangement for it. And I'm right on the limit for this fitting, so it won't all go in completely submerged in one hit, I don't think. I'll have to put it in one way, lift it out, and then put it in the other way. Because it's a tight fit. There we go, I can get it over halfway through in one side. So you can see all that water foaming out to the sides, just like french fries. Just while this was cooking on the first side, I took the box off the hoist and I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. The biggest concern I had was whether the glues would hold up to the temperature and also the, the two-part epoxy that I bogged the knot holes with. And it looks like they've held up okay. I checked with the supplier of the plywood that I've done the base and the roof with, and he assured me that it'll have no problems being up and over 150 degrees Celsius. I'll just get this up and drain out. Too bad. I can flip this and go in the other way. And that's got the other side in. Temperature still sitting at around 132 Celsius. So we're doing good. And that's sucking in. That's already completely sucked into the ply. And the solid timber, the golden cypress, is a little slower to take it up, but it's all sucking in there nicely. Now, if you wanted to have a painted finish, but still have the benefit of hot wax dipping, this is the time to paint. Bit awkward doing it flip around, but if you do it in one hit, like our main box here, while the wax is still, just the fraction after the wax is sucked into the grain, so it's dry to touch, but still hot, you roll on really quickly your paint and the paint then draws into the wood as well. It'll suck in millimetres depth compared to normal paint that just sits on the surface. You don't need to use a uh, primer, although you could. You can put direct paint straight in there and it sucks it straight up. And after you've got that first coat on, you're right to paint more layers down the track. You can decorate it any which way you want. Uh, whereas Try to paint it now that I've waxed it and it's cooled down. The paint just won't stick. It'll peel off. Well, that's the process. You don't have to see the next one. That's hot wax dipping for you. After this is cooled down, I'll put all of those fittings, the hinges, the catches, the struts back on there and we're right to go. All I've got to do then is whip up some legs. What are leg options? You can make timber ones. And if, that, if I was doing timber ones, I would have waxed them as well. But I'm doing steel and that'll work good for me. Partly why I'm using steel is that I'll have a bracket on the bottom and I'm going to bolt it down to the concrete pad so there's no risk of it toppling over. I'll take you through that in part five. 
We've finally reached the stage where we can put it together for the last time. I've got to embed the nuts to get the hinges on. Then do the gas struts and flip it around and put on the catches. Well, that's it. We've reached the end of part four. The box is all but complete. It's made, it's waxed. The fittings are all done. What's left to do? Well, there's the follower board, the queen excluder, the cover strips in various forms to allow for feeding, ventilation, but mostly for that nice way of inspecting where you only uncover a few frames at a time. We're almost there. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for reaching the end. If you found value in this, hit the like button, share, maybe even subscribe if that's for you. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.